In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this image using Photoshop and Illuminar. This is a long tutorial over at an hour in length, so if you want to follow along, I'll make the images available for you. A few of the images are from Unsplash, some of the images are my own. The only image I can't make available for you is the Tornado, because I purchased that from Adobe Stock, and I don't think they'd be too happy with me distributing that freely to anyone. So if you want to follow along, please feel free, download the images, try it for yourself. The tutorial is a mix of different techniques, some destructive, some non-destructive. When I am editing within Photoshop, nine times out of 10, I will use non-destructive editing methods. This tutorial was created to enable the students that I teach different methods and to give them a feel for what is a good thing to do and what is a bad thing to do, although the end results are the same, some of them being destructive means you have to step right back. So without further ado, because of the length of this tutorial, I'll jump right into it right now. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the canvas using the crop tool. Drag that down and I am looking to go around about there. And I'm going to take the canvas out that way a wee bit as well. Then I'm going to copy up the layer, which I'm going to delete just to do this, just to stretch this area at the top. Pull that out to there, that gives us a little more leeway in what we're going to do later. Click OK to that. Next thing, I'm going to delete the background layer anyway, and just so that I'm left with layer one, I am then going to once more copy up layer one, I'm then going to use Magic Wand tool, select all the black, press delete. So you see now that we have a blank layer. I'm going to turn that layer off so that you can see it. Deselect. As you can see, I've got some of my tabs open. And as you can also see, these images come from Unsplash. And you can see the names of the contributors there. The image I am looking for is that one. I'm going to grab that take it above my base layer and drop it in. Then I'm going to expand that layer again and I'm just going to drag it so as that and I'm holding down the shift key so as that I can move this to how I want it to be. So I'm going to take it that way, take it across there. I'm going to stretch it up a bit, click OK to that and then I'm going to drop the layer behind so that you see the effect we have here. This guide here is already within my image. Uh, I created it earlier. Command R brings up rulers. Command H, I'm using a Mac, hides the guides and brings them back when I need them. And you'll see later on why I've got this one created. So for now, I am going to hide that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the door element in. So the door should be here. I only need some of the door, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the entire door in. So grab that holding down the left mouse key, take it onto my image and drop. The size of the door is okay there, but we're going to make the door, the doorway go across the road. So I'm going to take it to around there. If I now go Command H, if I accept that, then go Command H and I place the bottom of my door on the doorway on the guide. Two ways I could do this. I could create a mask here to cut out the door, but for speed of this, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do it destructively and I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here, holding down Z, and just cut out around the door. I'm going to, then going to cut around here. And I could do this with a mask, but the reason I'm doing this is just to show different techniques when you know the end result. The mask is always best, because if I make a mistake here, I have to start all over again. And as I said, I'm doing this destructively, just for the purposes of this exercise, just to show different tools and how they can be used. And I'm going to take it that way there. I'll go along here, just randomly clicking. Now 
that selected now. I'm going to press the delete key, the backspace button, and then deselect. So you see now we have a hole cut in the doorway. I'm also going to get rid of this area here, but I'm going to do it using a mask. So what I'm going to do at the moment is I am going to cut round this and I'll just zoom through this for you. Okay, now that that's done, I want to show you what I'm going to do with the hard edges that are in here. I'm going to soften these edges slightly. So if I use the magic wand tool and I click in there, then go up to select, modify, expand. So what we're doing is we're expanding into the door, into the door frame. Two pixels to start off with. Okay, and then I'm going to modify and then feather, 0.5 of a feather is the best one to go for and click the backspace, delete key. That should soften the edges in here. And we'll do it once more just to get rid of anything else because remember we are creating a mask in here as well. So we'll do that, select, modify, expand, another two pixels, select, modify, feather. 0.5. Instead of doing 4 and then 0.5, work this away slowly. Press the delete key, backspace key. Right, for the next step, I am going to create a mask in this layer. So I'll go down and create a vector mask. I'm going to zoom in. And because it's a white mask that's created, I am going to paint with a black brush. The brush that I use 90% of the time is a soft round and the general brushes. So I'm just going to paint some of this away. Just as you can see, I'm going to take the flow up to start with. I may add some of this back in once I've got the road in position. Right, so if we now move the road down to around there and I said road there if we move the door down what I'm also going to do is I'm going to expand it slightly command T which is free transform I'm now going to hold down shift and I'm going to take the door across there and drop it down again just for the blend just for the final blend in this and I'm quite happy with that click OK so the door looks stretched but for the purposes of this exercise it's OK I'm then going to go back into my mask by clicking the mask, B for brush, and then I'm going to take away some more of this. So we'll do our final blends and my final colour tones for this one. I'll do it in Luminar, but if you're just using Photoshop, feel free to use any presets or tone it any way you, would, you wish at all. So I'm going to take that away, I'm going to zoom in. Take this down, and if you're doing this, I would take more time with it. This is just a general exercise, how to utilise different tools within the Photoshop toolset. Add some back in. Press X on the keyboard, take the brush down in size by using the square brackets. Any hard edges like this here, X, erase away again. And if you want, I take the brush opacity right back up. A more realistic effect, it's not going to be brilliant, this is a composite anyway. Then. I'll take away any hard edges and zoom back out. The next element I'm going to add is the tornado. This was purchased from Adobe Stock because it's one thing we don't get here in Scotland. There's tornadoes. So I'm going to drag that into my image and drop it there. I'm then going to put it behind the door. Take it up to around that level. Do you see? And you can see that it's sitting on the horizon just there. I am then going to create a mask for that straight away, but I need to check where it is sitting. So if I take it to there, I've turned the opacity down. If I take it to there, I should be able to get the effect that I'm after. So I'll take the opacity back up, create a mask, and then it's a white mask again, black brush. I'm going to increase the brush size. And you'll see that these are coming in from different light sources in different areas, these images. But 
it's when you blend them all together that the magic starts to happen with this. Uh, that sounds like Bob Ross here. Uh, it's when you blend them all together that the magic starts to... I'll start that again. It's when you blend them all together and tone and the tonal range and the colour range that everything starts to happen and it makes the, the full image tie together. So I've now turned my opacity down here just so that I can blend this tornado into these clouds. That will do for now. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an edge in this road. So what I have to do is use the rectangular marquee tool, select an area around that size. It doesn't matter if you go into the water because the water's in a different layer. Command C, which is copy, and then go edit, paste special, paste in place. So now if I turn the layers off here, you see that we have the edge of the road. What we need to do is we need to create a 3D effect with this. So how we go about this is we go Command T on a Mac, Control T on a keyboard, which is the free transform tool. And then if you hold down Command, we can stretch this to give us a vertical here. If you hold down Shift at the same time as Command, you will be able to constrain how much you move this. So if we hold down there, and then I push that in there, and I'm, al I'm always watching this edge. I don't mind what happens here, but I'm always watching this edge at the moment. Pull that up, pull that to about there, click OK, and then I'm going to expand this. Command T again, holding down Shift, I'm just going to expand this out. So, as I say, I'm always watching this area here. So for, as long as we get that drop, you may have to push that back in. As long as we get that drop, the, the next part of this will work okay. And I'll try and bring that down. And then go okay. Right, to create the edge, what I'm actually going to do is I am going to darken the layer. And to do that, I'm just going to drop the exposure. So you can get into Adjustments, Brightness and Contrast, click this, which is Clip to Layer Below. So we now create the edge. And I know that there's a small artifact here, but we'll sort that in a minute. So now suddenly you see the, be the beginnings of a 3D effect with this, the edge of the road. So I'm just going to darken it to around about there. And I'm going to then blend that layer into that, and that's Command E or Control E. So this area here we need to sort. Zooming in, I'm just going to use the cone stamp tool. Nothing fancy with this one. And I'm going to take the brush size up just to a decent size. Hold down Alt, select my source. Current and below, just the current layer I want to choose for this. Not all layers, I don't want anything else coming through in this. So this is just a slight blend in here. And you see it's went over the edge. So I'm going to show you how to sort that edge. That's the purpose of this, it's just creating different areas within it. Right, to sort that edge, if you take the rectangular marquee tool, draw there, move it up until these two match, around about there and then hit the backspace key and there you go quick fix so now you can see the image beginning to come together we have the base layer tornado the door the road the 3 the edge of the road next thing we're going to do is we're going to bend the road okay to bend the road i'm going to turn off a couple of layers i'm going to turn off that layer which is the door this layer here which is the tornado I'm also going to turn off the water underneath. And what I'm going to do is I am going to press Shift Alt Command E above this layer. That means it will copy this, these two elements, compress them together into one single layer. So Shift Alt Command E. And the reason it hasn't done it with the rest is because I've turned them off. So I can now turn off that layer. I can actually get rid of that layer now, but I'll keep it just now in case anything goes wrong. What I am going to do is I'm going to get into Edit, 
transform and warp and you'll see that it creates this grid I need to push this area up and bring that area down so how you do it is just drag that down the way you won't see much happening at the moment until I let go and I'm also going to push that one down a bit the reason I'm pushing that down as well is I need to try and maintain the same depth in that curve on the road forget what's happening with the horizon just now I'm going to push that one up and I'm going to bring it down here so see this slight curve that's happening now this is what we're working on so push that to about there and I'm going to bring this handle down just to try and maintain the same depth in here it's slightly bigger but for the purposes of this we'll go okay so I'm quite happy with that curve just now but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask that layer I'm going to mask it out totally so I do that by holding down alt and pre pressing the add layer mask so it disappears so you see what we have now so because it's a black mask this time I am going to paint using a white brush and that size should be okay so if I start painting here with a full opacity you should see the image beginning to happen just like that so we now have that curve in the road just there and I can bring that in around there and this is the area of the image that takes I would say the longest just to maintain because you're painting with masks what I'm also going to do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm pressing X just to get rid of some of the area and you see it's disappearing there so I'll just keep painting that in Z, take my brush size down just to paint that, just to make it match right, everything looks slightly messy at the moment so what you have to do now is you have to turn back on the door layer so that you can see where you are turn back on the tornado just for effect then create a mask with the layer 1 copy and the mask is a reveal all mask and all you do here is paint away here so it's a white mask paint in black and I've got full opacity here so I've now got control over that. Right, now what you do is you get and tidy up this area. I'll do it very quickly for the purpose of this video, but you can take your time doing it. So I'm back into layer six, zooming in, and painting onto the mask. If that white happens, you've not painted onto your mask. So I am going to go If I zoom back out, you'll see the effect there beginning to happen. These repetitions here, I will deal with in a second. I will also turn on the background layer so that you can see the image beginning to come together now. Okay, for the next part, we're going to add a figure here. So if I take that and I grab the layer, holding the left mouse button, and drop it there. Then I am going to zoom out and I'm going to press Command T and expand the size of this just to around there. We may later on drag this down to give this more emphasis on the image just to help the compositional elements of it. So I have that there. I'm going to click OK. For this one, I'm going to create a mask. But above, before I start the mask, I'm going to drag back the brightness and contrast of this. So if I drag back the brightness to around there, and you see that's affecting the whole image. I only want it to affect this layer below, so I click that button there. It only affects that layer. So I'm going to take it to around there, 
And that's me, I'm quite happy with that. I'm then going to get into my mask. It's a reveal all mask, so I paint in black. And I'm just going to very quickly paint out as much of this as I can. And you can see already it's beginning to blend in. Not perfectly, but you can see it is beginning to blend in. Zoom out, zoom in, sorry, and take the mask down. Take the brush down, that's me getting confused. Take the brush down in size and take out any more elements within this. Right, to get this figure to blend in a bit better, what I'm going to do is on that actual layer, I'm going to drop the opacity and I will zoom out to show you this. Because you can see we've got all the light coming down here. We've got nothing representing the light here. This is just a composite image to show you different techniques. I'm going to drop the opacity. And do you see it's beginning to blend in even more? At the same time, I can go back up and pull the brightness back. So around there, you can still see slight marks. If I now drop the brush opacity and start blending out, it will make it look more natural. Just about there. So that's slightly more natural. If you find that when you're doing it, it's not perfect where you want it, move them away here from the contrasting area and bring them into that area there. Zoom back in. B for brush. Make sure you're on the mask. 33%. I'm going to take this up to full opacity. I'm going to take away those areas there so that there's nothing on the road at all. Zoom out. So there you can see already it begins to match in slightly better. We've still to tonalise this entire image, so everything will pull together by the time we get that. But before I go any further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the canvas just to give a bit more depth here. So I'll do that by stretching down using the crop tool. The reason this is taking... Ah, see, we have more of an image here. So I'll go down to around there. Helps with him uh, coming out of the depths. And that looks a lot better. What I will do now is I'll go in and take out some more of this using the mask. So make sure you're on the mask. B for brush tool. I'm going to take the opacity down to around 66 and just take out some of these elements just so as that it looks slightly more natural. The bigger the brush is, the more of a natural blend you'll get. So if I even do that over there, and there, there, and there. Take another one there, and another one, and that size. Okay, you can see the amount of layers that we've built up, and we can afford to get rid of some of these layers because you can see the size of my document just now is 2.13 gigs. So I no longer need this layer. I'm just going to take that down. I no longer need this layer. Because as you can see, it's not showing up. I have a copy of it here, so get rid of that. It's taking the size down again. Everything else I still need to work with because there's a couple more elements I need to add to this. And what I am going to do is I'm going to show you how to add the brushes to create these elements. So if I go into my brush tool, I already have them in here, but if I go into my brush tool and I go in here and go down to import brushes. The brushes for me are in this folder here, which is Photoshop Complete and road water tutorial and I have free water brushes and bug brushes. I'm going to add both but I'll show you how to do it. So if I click free water brushes, click open, what happens is although I have them in here, they go down to the bottom. So I'll close that down as well and I'll add the second lot of brushes. So the next brushes I'm going to add 
our import brushes back in here in the bird brushes. Going to quick open. And if I go to the bottom, you'll see where they've went. So I'm going to choose a brush here. You choose whatever ones you want. But I am going to choose... I'm going to choose them. Right, for the colour of my brushes, I want them to be black because they're going to be in the background here. So, and I want them behind the door. So, if I go to layer 4 in this case and I go create a new layer and I take the brush size up and then I'm going to paint the brushes in. So that's the buds into this image. Uh, I may fade them slightly just to make them match into the background and only down to about 92. Although these are painted in black, but 90, 78 works fine. I also need to add bubbles in front of this chap here. So what I'm going to do, I may shift this layer. I'm going to create a new layer, back into my brush, make sure the brush is selected, close that up and go into the free water bubbles. Those there. Yep, they look okay. Increase the size. Make sure to choose my brush, if I go for white, it's going to stand out too much. Although I can fade them to around there, I think that is too much. So what I'm actually going to do is select the colour from here. And to do that, you hold down Alt, and I'm going to go to around there. Right, these are going to be too blue, but what I can then do turn the opacity of the blue down and it may look slightly more natural. I'm going to just use the eraser tool to get rid of some of these from the road. So we have that. Let me expand the size of them. Command T. Just about there, and then go back in and erase the ones that have come over the road as well. And I'm only using the erase here to save using a mask, because I don't really need it. These are incidental, these are just adding up, and I will take the eraser tool to 100%. Right, so this is a long tutorial, but if you're unfamiliar with Photoshop and some of the techniques, it's actually quite a good one to do because it brings in a lot of different techniques to create an image. And there are different ways of doing everything. So there we go. There's the bubbles created and the buds in the background. Next thing we have to do is go down to the road and create a texture in the road. So I'm just going to go above here, create a new layer, go into this texture here, this time Command A, select all, Command C is copy, go back into my tab, Command V is paste. I am then going to scale this, but I'm going to hold down shift because the scale of this, for this image, doesn't really matter too much. We're just trying to cover some of the road and this is going to be randomly painted. So if I go there and I create a mask on it, I'm actually going to turn the opacity down first just to see how it's going to affect the image to around. For this, the opacity is going to be around there. I am then going to create a hide all mask by holding down Alt and pressing the mask button. And I'm then going to add cracks in the road. It's a hide all mask, so I need to paint in white. Go back up and choose my original brush. I'm going to take the opacity down. And I'm just going to randomly paint cracks in the road. And you should see them beginning to appear. And if I want to emphasise some of them, And you'll notice that I'm avoiding painting in the dark areas. So if I want to emphasise some of them, I can just keep painting in the one area. There. And I'm going to stop about that. Just paint that one back out. I 
can turn the opacity down here and just run it over there. Right, if I want to increase the contrast of these, I can go back into the adjustments and go brightness and contrast. Make sure to check this and it only affects this. So if I push the contrast, you can see what happens. So I'm going to leave it around there. Zoom back out to let you see what we have so far. So that's what we have so far. Okay, the next step is to make the road edge slightly uneven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the mask. You saw how to load in brushes earlier, so I'm going to choose another brush. In this case, it's in here, the speed set, and it's this brush here that I'm going to use. Then I'm going to paint away areas. And you'll notice that the brush is moving each time I click. How that is controlled is in here, brush settings, shape dynamics. And if I go into shape dynamics, I can change the size jitter. You'll notice that the brush is moving around here. And I'm just going to take it to around there. The angle of the jitter is as random and it's each time you release the mouse, it changes. So I'll go around here for this. And I'm going to paint in here. And you'll see it happening. Now, I've got my brush at 100%. So this is just, you could go too much with this or too little. I just want to make the road not just as even. So and you'll notice that the mask here has come back in. So I'll go back on here. It's a hide all mask. And what I will do is change my brush back to here and paint that out. And then go back in and just paint it in ever so slightly using the correct opacity. That might even be too much. Right, so we're nearing the end of this. We've just tonality and everything to do now. I'm going to zoom in and get rid of some of the straight edges here. So back down to this layer, and I'm just going to do it using this brush. And if that happens, it means you haven't clicked on the mask. So I am going to get rid of some of this. I'm going to take my opacity up. I don't mind the odd artifact, but when you're doing it, take your time when you're doing it. Straight edges there are okay, that's okay. Take that one out because we've other elements to add later on once the image has been finalised. Take it along there just ever so slightly to remove any hard edges. And in here as well. So that's us nearly at the end. Okay, the next stage is we need to cut a hole in the road to allow for this light to come through. So what we're going to do is select the top elements of the image and the bubbles. No, we're not going to select the bubbles. And then create a group. And you do that by pressing the group tab. So they drop into there. So that's everything there. If I turn that off, everything's there. The next thing we have to create one with the bottom elements. I'm actually going to lock that group so I can't make any mistakes. So I'm now going to select from there right down to the bottom element here, leaving the water in the background and then create another group. So I'm not going to name these, but if you need to name them, you just double click on it, top, bottom, and that's the top and bottom elements. Okay, what we're going to do is I'm going to create a mask on the bottom elements because I need to cut through the door. So if I create a mask there, 
and we've created a texture on this so it's okay to follow the lines in the road that will make it more natural with the cracks that we have already created. So I'm just doing this with the polygonal lasso tool and I'm just following some of the cracks in the road. And I'm going to do that. That there I don't like. But I'll leave it for the purpose of it. Okay, what we're going to do using the polygonal lasso tool is create a hole in the road. And I'm going to do that by just following the cracks that are in the road already because we've added that texture. It'll make it look more natural. And I'll take that to there, out there. So you can do this as randomly as you want. And I'll tie that up around there. Right, because we have created a mask here, I can then just use the black. It's a reveal all mask. I can use the black paintbrush 100%. And there's the hole cut in the road, but we still don't have depth. How we're going to create the depth is by the following. I'm going to deselect that area. I'm going to open up the bottom layer and go to any part of the road at all. Even, I'll just go there. I am going to use the rectangular marquee tool and select around that area. And then I'm going to go edit, copy, edit, paste. Using the move tool I have auto select off so the only layer I can move is the layer I've selected. And you see it just moving there ever so slightly. I'm going to bring that layer back to below and out of the group. You can see that it's now out of the group because it's not aligned to the right. So if I'm quick anywhere here I can move it. So there we go. Right. And although you can see the area I have selected is shallower, shorter than that, command T and just stretch it into place. So that we know where we're working, I'm going to get into the adjustments and I'm going to turn the brightness down. So you can see it beginning to come together, the hole in the road. The next thing on that layer, although I'm going to create a mask, it's just in case I don't like it, I'm creating a mask here, come back into the polygonal tool and I'm going to cut out areas of this. Remember this is meant to look 3D, so you have the options of clicking anywhere at all. And I'm just trying to make it as random as possible. I'm going to go in there, down there. So I'm going to take out that as the first element and use the brush to paint that out. So there's the first element of it missing. You can see we're beginning to get a wee 3D effect now. Next one I'm going to take out just some here, not too much. Just so that you can see it, so you get the idea. And back to the brush, B tool, deselect. So that says we now have a hole cut in the road. I may adjust just that area there. That's the good thing with the mask. If I had just cut this out and deleted it, I wouldn't be able to get back in and sort this. So I'm going to take just a wee random area out there. Brush, deselect, doesn't look right. Deselect, back into it, and let's cut some up here. And then back into the brush, paint that out, deselect. Right, so we need to create depth in that same same kind of depth that we've created here. How we can do that to save selecting the entire area and trying to paint in and making mistakes, if you go over the layer itself, hold down command, I'm on a Mac, control on a keyboard, select it, it selects the area we did. I'm then going to get back in here and using a black paintbrush with a very low opacity,
screen in some depth to this. And you'll notice I am not painting on the mask here. I'm painting on the actual image itself. So I'm just creating depth in it. Or trying to create, give the impression of depth. Not too much at all, but just to show that there is in there as well. It gives us a little bit of depth along the edges. Important to do the edges, just to create the contrast between that. We'll get more of a contrast if you paint at the edges, right? I'll just go in and I'll take some of that down again. Down here, I'm going to paint a wee bit darker. And that's all we're doing, we're just creating depth within this image. And there as well. Select, and if I zoom out, you can see that there's a slight depth created. But what I want under here is a bit more light and the blue is showing through. So I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to choose the white, and I'm in the soft round brush. And all I'm going to do is paint in there. Okay. And then I've dragged that layer down, going to expand it just by holding down shift. And you see we've created that contrast already, even more so, so the hole in the road looks even better. I'm then going to drop the opacity down just to around there. Okay, for the purposes of this, I'm going to show you how to transfer this to a new document because I'm running at 2.5 gig and a 16 gig of RAM. So I'm going to shift this to a new document just so that the workflow is a lot quicker. So, what do you do? Command A is select all. Now that we've copied this up, Command C, which is copy, file, new. And what it does is it creates a new document at the size that you have just selected all and copied that. So that's create. And you can see this is a massive document. And then go edit, paste. So there we have it, single document. I'll blend that down into there. And if you watch the size difference here, 482 megabytes. What I am going to do is I'm going to deselect that and close the document. I'm just going to click save. Okay, now that we're here in a brand new document at 482 megabytes, I am going to go in to Skylum Software Luminar 4. So this is how I'll use the AI tools to enhance this image even further. So the first thing I'll do is turn off the looks. I'll then go into AI Enhance, and I'll bring that up to around there. I'll take the Sky Enhancer in to add more drama to this. Then I'll go into the AI structure, add some more structure to the elements of it. I'm quite happy with that just now. I will then go into the colour, pull back the saturation, pull back the vibrance. I'm watching this area here. I'm not too bothered about this area at the moment. So I want a bit of blue in that. I am then going to get into the advanced settings and then I'm going to pull back some of the saturation in the yellow, some of the saturation in the orange. And although this is still quite light compared to that, we'll deal with that in a second, I'm going to bring back some of the blue in here. And how I'm going to do that, I may pull some of it back even further. And then bring it back. Yep, I'm watching this area here. So I'm going to bring back some more blue here. Edit mask. Use the brush tool and click Erase. And I am going to paint around 80%. So I'm going to paint in there. So some of the blue should start to appear back in this. See the blue starting. If I turn that off, turn it back on, off, back on. So you can see there 
that some of the blue is here. And that gives us more emphasis in the contrast of the depth here to the light to the sky above. Turn off the mask. Then I am going to get into light. And I'm going to turn the exposure of the entire image down to around there. Then I'm going to use some smart contrast to pop it slightly. Shadows I'm going to pull back. I'm going to go into the advanced settings and I'm going to emphasize some of the whites. I'm going to change the temperature slightly to about there. So far I am liking that. Details, I'm going to add some small details just to pick out some small details, not too much. Medium details. I noticed it jumping at the door there, so I'm going to leave the medium details. Colour is fine. I may pull back some of the blues again in there now that I've adjusted everything else. I'll go into the blue and I'll pull back the saturation. Just to around there. Right. This here I am quite happy with. I'm going to click Apply. Okay, that's us now back in Photoshop. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add an adjustment layer. And I'm going to add a lookup table. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to add Futuristic Bleak, which for this image I feel suits very, very well. I'm going to pull it back just to around there, and it's created a mask as you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the brush tool, paint in black to bring some more emphasis back in here. And you'll see the blue coming in. And if I use a bigger brush, I'll get a better effect with the blue. You'll see it also affects the road. We'll deal with that in a second. So if I do that, just spread that out there. And it's just to bring emphasis back into this uh, diver. I, I'm then going to press X, take the brush down, and I'm going to paint the effect back out of the road so as that we see So that's that painted back out of the road. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to paint it back in there as well. If I take the B for brush, paint back in here and we'll bring back some of that desaturated and blue tone here. And just make sure I catch everything. Zero. Right, so if I flick that on and off, you can see the difference. And you can actually see the difference in here, so that means I am going to, and you can see by the brush as well, I have some areas up here I've missed, and I'm getting them now. So you can see that in here. If you can't see your thumbnails too well, right click, and you can choose large, medium, or small thumbnails. There is one just there. And I am going to paint this back in as well. So if I do that, that will take the contrast out of there. So we've got the diver quite well emphasised, but subtly. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take it back and I'm going to paint in black. And soften this just by about 20%. Right, start again. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to soften this because that's the blue showing through. Take it down to about 20% paint and white. And just paint over it. And that is enough for this. I'm going to go in and check that road. Just to check that there's not too much. Yep, that's fine. There is a part there that I am going to get as well. So that must be over here. I'll take that to 100% just that you get it because I don't want any elements showing through. 
Yep, that's it going. Right, last but not least, Shift, Alt, Command, E. That merges these layers visible, ready for me to take it into the raw editor. And if you've seen any of the rest of my videos, you know that this is where I always finish my images. Camera raw filter. So I'll be using a mix Right, in the camera raw filter, as you know, I'll be using a mix of different tools here. If you've seen these before, first of all, I'm going to bring in a vignette. It just adds more drama here. Next, I am going to paint in dark and light areas using the radial filter. So for a bit of light here, I'm going to drag that out. Just add a tiny extra part of light on the road. Turn the overlay off. Turn the exposure up. We are emphasising that area already. Use the brush, turn on the mask, paint it out of the edge of the road, the front facing edge of the road. So if I turn that off, and if I adjust this, you'll see exactly what's happening. So I can do that with it. I'll leave it to around there. Same within here. I'll create another one. I'll take that back into the radio filter. And you can see the light that's creating there. I, in here, I'll add one in here as well, just to add a slight effect on the edges of that broken road. And then I'll go in using the edit and paint out some areas. Using the brush, turn on my mask, turn off the overlay, take the brush down in size, just to add a wee bit more depth and contrast to this. And around there, turn the mask off, see what that's done. Turn that down, you'll see it happening. Turn it there. I am then going to go in and still using the brush at minus setting, I'm going to get and paint out of here. So I'm going to zoom in to do this. Go back in there. Choose the overlay. Select the point I want. Choose the brush. Turn the mask on and paint it out of this area. And I'm just going to do this relatively quickly so that you can see how it's all coming together. I'm not quite happy with that. Turn the overlay off. Yep, we've got a nice wee effect there. Zoom back out, Command and minus. Next, I'm going to darken some of the areas here, still using the radio filter, take it back to edit. I'm going to reset it. I'm going to draw using the overlay, I'll see it now. And I'm going to draw in some darker areas here. Turn the overlay off, turn the exposure down. So ready, you see, just be doing that, we're beginning to get a bit of depth around this area. Turn the overlay on. Hold down shift and I can hold down alt and I can move one edge, the other three are anchored. So if I hold down alt, I can do that. I'm going to take it out to about there. I'm going to paint it out of there. Brush. Just paint it back out of there. I'll go back into my main tools. I may add a bit more emphasis on here. Reset again. Just about there. Turn the overlay off. Turn the exposure up. So you can just see by adding small areas like that, it creates a bit of depth into your image. I can also use the brush to do it. So if I want to drop the exposure of the door, see that large area in the door there, I can paint that in. And I'll just do this relatively quickly so that you can see. And then if I turn this down, so you can see how it affects the door. But I'm not going to use that one. I don't want to use that one for this. So I can select the pin and hit the backspace key and it deletes it. So far everything's looking the way I want it. I'm going to crop down and bring it in just to around there. 
which I feel gives a better contrast. There's nothing going on down here, but I want it like that. I've got two elements that sit there. So what I'm going to do now is just zoom in and you can see all these bits here. What I'm going to do is use the cone stamp tool. I'm going to turn the opacity down and I'm just going to start blending here. So if I take maybe the odd area like that and just blend it through it. I'll just take off some of the edges. Her eyes are drawn straight away to repetition. So you'll see quite a few elements in this one, but because I'm doing this as a short tutorial, and I'm also going to go over here and deal with this bit of the door. I'm going to take the brush size right down and just blend some of that away. Now you could have done this at the very beginning with the mask. The other thing I'm going to do is some of these edges here, I may soften them. And I'll do that by using the blur tool. And I'll just do that to them. As you can see, this is not perfect, but it gives you an idea of how everything works within the program. If I was doing it, I would take more time to get these edges better. Perhaps use a mask, but the reason I didn't use a mask for this was because I wanted to show the different tool elements and how they could be used and utilised within the softwares. So if you've lasted this long, well done. If you've picked something up from it, even better. And then we'll just soften these edges here. It just shows that your eyes aren't drawn directly to it. See that door for me might be just too bright. And what I can do is I can go for an adjustment mask, adjustment layer, turn the brightness down to about, see there, invert the mask, command I, and then using the brush in white, paint that area back in. To around there. And that takes the emphasis away from that bright area because the light, a lot of the light is coming from behind you so and I can paint in other areas as well right you can see it's playing up at the edge but I'm going to show you how to correct that in a second if you zoom in take the brush size down take the hardness of the brush edge to around 40-50 take the brush size down Hold down, click once, hold down shift. Swap the brush to black, click once, hold down shift. You can actually draw around it. You see it happening there? Right, I've taken my hand off of shift, so I'm going to get around this again. There you go. Down there, down there, down to there. You, can, you may see slight changes. You may not, it just depends how careful I've been when painting. Because I don't think I have went over any, nope, I have there to there. You see the difference? So that's by clicking in one area and then holding down shift and it draws a straight line. And it allows you to cut around things as well. So I'm looking for all the areas that it may have affected. I can do, even go in larger here. Just for the purpose of this, for you watching this, it's just taking too long. But you would take your time with this. And just so that no elements are showing up. Zoom back out, and there we have it. The final image. There's more you could do to this. There is a lot more. 
But for the purposes of this, you can add too much, too many elements in. You could add sun rays in. You could, you could do anything. For the purposes of this exercise, it was just to show you how different tools can be utilised to work an image. And you don't have to stick to certain ones. I decided that after creating the image that I didn't like uh, what I saw. So I, I felt that there was more elements needed. So in Luminar, I added the sun rays. I then added more cracks in the edge of the road with an even brush and then the goldfish as well. I just give it a better flow to the entire image.